I think I have most of my Snickers bar down. Hey guys, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's like, I'm starving. I have to eat something really quick or I can't make it through this. So my breakfast was half a Snickers bar. There's peanuts in there. That's protein or something. <laughs> It'll get me through till we're done. So we have these chairs. These old chairs are from a table that we picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. It was 140. We got seven chairs and a big table. One of, well, a few of the chairs are broken. So we got to do a couple of little repairs on these. So we're going to use three of them to make a bench. We always love to find chairs with square bases. Benches are really hard to make if the, if the, you know, it's not square, but when they're square, they just kind of scooch up together and it really takes no time at all to make a bench out of them. These are, um, I think, Mexican pine. Yes, they were made in Mexico and they are what is known as Mexican pine. They usually hand carve them, hand cut everything out. Um, they're not necessarily old. I think they're probably from like the late 90s. Yeah, but they're going to look really cute. And I am doing a little Christmas craft over here because we have an excess of cardboard because we have an online store and I'm always looking at things I can do it besides just putting it in the recycle bin. So I have taken and cut out little um, ornaments out of cardboard. I don't have the ribbon, but I will add some ribbon to the top. They're about six inches long by three inches across the top. And if you guys remember from my haul video on Saturday, I picked up that um, French kind of dress form with all the hooks and I'm gonna make ornaments and hang them from the dress. So I'm excited about that. And I'm just gonna get started painting these with weathered wood while Zeb gives you the lowdown on the uptown on what's going on with the bench. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to put two of the chairs together first because I don't want to get in the way of Jamie over there. And what I'm doing, here, let me bring the camera down so you guys can see better. So what I'm going to do is just line them up. Ooh, going to need to clean these before we paint them. <laughs> <laughs> we got some wipes. And they have a square seat like I showed at the beginning of the video. So they line up nice and square on the back. Now, if you watched the video where we cut out the door for the farmhouse, I made a frame to hang that door. And this is leftover common pine. So I'm going to poke this out over here. And this is what's going to hold the back of the bench together because I do have a little bit of a gap right here where the chairs meet up because the seat does overlap just a little bit. So I'm gonna use some more of that common pine and just screw it together right here in the back. And then when I add that third chair, we'll put it over here like this. And I may go sideways and cut the edge off. I, I missed my cuts a little bit. They were supposed to be a little wider, but I didn't have my saw with me this morning and there was no time to run back. All right, so I'm gonna run some countersink holes so this is my countersink bit here and mine usually break off and once they break off i resharpen them i've just got a little uh, belt grinder that i use to resharpen those and then i just use the little nub usually they're about this long on the drill bit but they work great still like that and i'm just going to countersink a hole here just enough so that the screw head can sit down in there and we can fill it later with some wood putty or lightweight spackle. And if I wanted to drill it deeper, you could use like a wooden plug. I'm just punching holes in uh, cardboard over here. Um, Caitlin is on here. If you missed yesterday, we did go live with the new IOD transfers. We had a random Tuesday live. Um, and we did eight different transfers on projects in one hour. It was a little bit crazy. We went live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, but we really wanted to celebrate the new transfers. So we were excited about that. And guess what, you guys? Today is Zeb's birthday. So <laughs> 38 years old. And yeah. he just gets more handsome every day. Sure. Sure. It's distinguished once you, you hit a certain age, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we're excited about that. Okay, so Mexican pine is just um, furniture made in Mexico, but we live in the western part of the United States, so this is pretty common. It gets imported. Um, we just purchased it from Facebook Marketplace, but you can, you, you can buy it new places, I think. Yeah. 
So everybody says, you ain't seen nothing yet until you're 50. <laughs> um, if you're new to our channel, make sure you hit subscribe. If you like junk makeovers, Waste Out Wednesday is where we take old junk and things that might have been discarded and turn them into awesome projects. Sometimes it's crafts, sometimes it's furniture. Um, and if you want to use the paint and products that we're going to use today, make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com. That's where we carry all the paints, the stamps, the transfers, the stencils, all the good stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to use an inch and a five-eighths, number six. This is probably intended for sheetrock, but I use them with wood all the time. The reason you countersink, though, is because they do have this little flange here that kind of bevels out. And you will split your wood if you don't allow a recess for that and you just run the screw down flush. I like this idea with the cardboard because it's not something you're probably going to make a million dollars on. But if you're just sitting there watching Hallmark movies, this is the kind of craft that you can just do and chill out. And I think it'd be a really good idea for when it's slow at the shop. I can have my employees make these. And you don't have to do them just for Christmas. You can hang them on a tree, but these cards are cute to decorate year round. I got the idea from some cute cards um, that my friend Sarah said to me. Um, Sorry if that's loud. They were vintage inspired cards. Mine probably won't be nearly as cute, but these would also be really cute if you got out the glitter, but I don't know that I want to incorporate glitter into this craft room currently because I feel like this back room would be a hot mess. It's, it's got a lot going on right now. Everybody just says happy, happy birthday. Thank you. I think I might take him out to a fancy lunch. We were thinking about taking the family out for dinner, but it's going to be a cheer practice, wrestling practice. Like nobody's going to be home until super late. So I figured, well, my parents are in town, so we'll go out to a nice lunch. Well, plus we got we to gotta, uh, film another video today, later, that'll go up tomorrow, and I got to get that edited. And then... Caitlin says happy birthday to her favorite uncle. Oh, thanks, um, Caitlin. It's been great working with you and getting to know you better in the last couple of years. Thank you for working with Caitlin. Usually I get a call from Caitlin every morning when I'm done working out. <laughs> she catches me out of breath and we go over what needs to be done every day. She's awesome at that. All right. All right. Okay, so Jamie's still over there. She's painting a bunch of those. And I will paint the backs but probably not right away because I want to get to stamping them. Just wanted to show you guys kind of up close what this is looking like. Okay. All right, and you can, you can attach these a bunch of different ways. My chairs have these cutouts here or I would have run it across the bottom and I probably still might run another little board across the back and attach it to here running uh, horizontal with the uh, the seats but for now this is going to work really well and hold this together and then I'll get those I'll get these brackets right here up at the front and do that in just a minute and then we can paint those or whatever we might spray these chairs but I don't know <laughs> well we can show them how to put it together and I think this would be easier to spray um, I don't know, will that fit through the door in the spray booth? We might not be, we might end up being, uh, I guess it's, we, yeah. it's raining today. We were supposed to get snow, but it's rain, which is throwing things off at the farmhouse. So, you know, we're, we're hoping that we don't get so much rain that we can't continue working on the foundation stuff. All right, am I in your way out? Um, well, I'm going to have to probably hang this off the edge. Well, I'll scoot over a little bit. I need to move these out. Were I in the garage or outside? I don't want to get just... sawdust in my cardboard ornaments here. <laughs> Were we outside or in the garage? I'd just throw it out on the ground and lay it all out. Hold on, hold on. Screw it together. I'm watching your stuff. <laughs> I worked really hard on those cardboard ornaments. Okay. All right, now... I'm just making sure the gap is right here. Just eyeballing it mostly. I didn't, I just want the chair to sit, the bench to sit level. Okay. That's cute. Yeah. Not hopefully, that I'm surprised. I mean, hopefully it'll turn out all right. Glitter glue is less messy. Agreed, Maggie. Agreed. I might make up a bunch of these and then uh, pay my daughter Eliza to glitter the edges because she actually is a 
really good at glittering and she likes it. I am not a fan of glitter, mostly because of the message. Last year when we were doing those Christmas ornaments, you were like, oh, these need some glitter. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I like it. You just like <laughs> the way it looks. Um, we are going to be painting this bench in, I think, a little black brush. Possibly black, possibly black velvet, whatever black is in this. Once we squirt it out, we'll know. I guess we can hand brush it. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's, it needs a good scrubbing. It's got like lots of splatter down here on the bottom. But in just a sec here, we're going to stand it up and see how we did. So these brackets, I am going to, I am going to put these ones there. They feel like they're a little on the narrow side, but maybe I'll do them like this and just cut them off with my with my, um, I've got a little oscillating Jeffrey saw. Scott says, I have glitter everywhere already. I try to be careful. It happens. <laughs> it's, 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 craft supplies, it just goes around. Everybody's saying happy birthday. Um, Casey says happy birthday to my favorite YouTuber. Oh, thank you. All right. I'm just going to flip this. You need You're just kind of manhandling that all yourself. Well, the front, it's attached pretty well in the back, but you the front is not all right, attached. Well, I'll just, I'll just stare at you and drink my water. Okay, wait for your cardboard to dry. <laughs> uh, a purple lily, the floors in our shop are actually just laminate and they were done previous to us moving in by the previous owners of the shop. So we don't have a video on it because there's just laminate flooring. Um, it I think holds it's, up really, really well. I think it's from floor and decor. I thought it was from Lowe's, I don't know. But it's just laminate, it looks like painted wood. But. Okay, so right in here, I think I'm just going to go sideways, and then let me show you the saw I'll use. I won't do it live on camera because this saw is super loud. I mean, this saw is really loud. So I just, I would just one. use this, and you can, it's nice for cutting flush things off. You can just get in there and cut that. So I'm going to put these sideways because I like that better because I cut them too narrow to go like this, to go vertical like that. So I'm just going to set them down sideways right there at the top. And I think that'll work great I wonder to hold if you the front of the bench together. Bottom. Like two ties? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Might have to do that later, though. Well, can you take these out and just cut them in half? That would probably be the perfect size. Take them outside real quick. All right, you show them what you're doing then. The okay. heat gun is right over here if you need to get those. Although, I don't want you to burn your cardboard. Okay, I'm guys, gonna... I'm going to run these outside real quick. Just cut them in half. Does everyone move the camera over here and I can show them my crap on them? Yep. And I will be right back. Okay, so we're back. You want to tilt that down just a little bit. They can see what we got going on. They're mostly dry. <laughs> I've just got these cardboard tags, essentially, and you could use these for tags for gift wrapping, too. Just cut them a little bit smaller, stamp whatever you want on them, and I just cut a hole in the middle on the top, and I'm going to be using the IOD stamps to make some cute little um, vintage-inspired tags. So I'm just going to go outside and cut that. So I'm going to start with, I really love this Bohemian stamp one here. Um, I think I'm going to do this one first. And I'm going to do a background on these and then I'm probably going to use red paint over the top of them to put, don't worry, your IOD stamps are really sturdy. I'm going to use red paint over the top of this ink once the ink dries. Okay, so I'm using Bohemian stamp. Got my painted cardboard here in weathered wood. And I'm just going to take my white ink. I need to re-ink this. Let me put this on here. These ink pads make stamping really good. The thing about stamping is that when you use paint, it's okay. But if you want to get lots of details, the ink is going to give you more details. And I, I feel like it's faster, too. Okay. Bohemian stamp. I like these because the size is good for my size ornaments. So weathered wood is already painted on my cardboard. And then I'm just going to take and put this over the top. Trying not to shift. They said, wow, that is loud. Yeah, yeah you can hear it outside, he's huh? cutting outside. That it's a reciprocate. Is that reciprocating? What's it called? I don't know. Oscillating. Yeah, oscillating saw, and it's from Harbor Freight. It's a generic sawzall. Um, right, no, I think I got it. No. Sawzalls are different. 
Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to... There's my background on my first stamp here, on my first ornament. And Zeb's going to take you back to what he's doing. And I'm going to continue using the white ink to stamp these to get my base started for my cute little ornaments. So on these thin pieces of wood, it's very important to countersink because this is going to be really prone to splitting. So you don't want it in between the two pieces of wood is what's holding it together, not at the actual screw. So the IOD ink is permanent. Um, I will take and uh, take uh, some clear wax or maybe a thin coat of Big Top and seal these so that way they'll hold up to you. I mean, it's, it's cardboard, but if they get wet, it could be a problem. It's so, not like the paint's going to be cardboard, because that cardboard <laughs> soaked that paint right up. Yeah. It is not an alcohol-based ink, if that's what you're asking as far as permanent goes, but the ink does stay on really well. All right. I'm done drilling for a second here. Um, I thought someone asked before I took off, um, how would you make the boards more visually appealing? So once we paint these black, they're not going to be super noticeable. And these ones here are going to hide, let me show you, behind the front of the bench. But if you wanted to, what you could do if you were, if you didn't like the way this square board looks, I mean, the rest of the, the uh, boards are fairly square, so I'm not going to worry about it on this one. You could router these edges before you put it on or do some detail or, or even cut this with, to match like this here, you could match that detail and then just just duplicate it over in here or even trace it out beforehand. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want on here. We're not going to on this one, but that that's what I would do if I wanted it to maybe be a little more matching. Matchy, matchy. I am actually just using the erasable ink because guess what? When you put sealer over, it's no longer erasable. But you can also use the mixing white. Either one would work for this project. I don't project. think they can see what you're doing. Well, well they just asked a question if I was using oh. the erasable ink. So I was just responding. Here, so, I'll right. move it over because I'm, I'm hogging up too much. Okay. All I'm doing right now is I'm using the crockery stamp. So I'm creating a little different design. This one probably won't get the paint on it because this has some words. But I'm doing some more simple tags. And I'll probably sell these tags for like... I don't know, $3.95 in the shop. Just cutesy little tags. I'll put some pretty ribbon on the top. Maybe $2.95. I don't know. They don't take very much effort. And the, the product used is minimal. Okay, so I'm just going to use a little bottom strip here that's from the uh, Bohemian set. And you can definitely use the red and green inks to make some really creepy. Um, cute Christmas ones and I think I'm going to do a bunch of different styles. I'm just starting out with these and then I will um, go from there. I don't know why I, I inked the whole stamp and I just needed to cross it. Alright, so because these chairs are not, uh, they're, they're handmade so and, and carved so they're not precisely uniform. That's there are true. some gaps and things here and there, but we're going to work with that. Once we paint it, that won't be really noticeable, I don't think. How did I cut the cardboard so uniform? I actually used um, a, a paper cutter. It's like a vintage paper cutter. I'll show it to you guys. I cut the cardboard off of my box, and then I used a vintage paper cutter, like one of those lose-your-hand ones. So there, here's this one. This one's cute. Lose your I think, hand. You, well, if you put your hand under there, you could lose it. I think that's really cute. And I'm going to paint the backs of these, so don't worry. They will get done. Okay. Wrong drill. All right, next one over here. How many did I make? Got five of them. Oh, I'll do a... This is the kindest regard stamp. This one will be good. That is loud. All right, one more time and then we're done with the it's screws. Okay. I'm trying to see how much I need to ink. All right, because I'm going to do two of these at once. I'm using kindest regards. It's a good French word stamp. Basically, I'm getting every stamp that I own dirty. All right, before I do that, let me show you one other thing I'm going to do here. 
Maybe. All right, we're precariously balanced. <laughs> so when we were talking about these at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that they were all broken up. You're going to have to bring your stuff over here and show them oh, close. I'll show them in a minute. I'm just stamping. They've seen me do that before. So I'll this one here is broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flex that gap open as far as I can without pulling it out of the dowel. There's like a dowel or screw right in here. And this is type on two wood glue. Just going to kind of force it down into the crack as much as possible. Past. So you're going to go grab that paper cutter? Uh, yeah, and I was also going to grab some other things. Okay, and then you're going to flex that back closed. Okay, oop, we're losing it. And then wipe off any excess glue before it dries. And it's actually got some pretty good tension now that I've flexed it back closed. So that should, as long as I don't bump it or move it, I don't necessarily need to clamp it because that would be an awkward, I mean, you could probably clamp from here to here, but your clamp's gonna wanna slip off the rounded edge. So I'm just gonna leave it. And then when we paint it, it'll just be part of the distress. We'll give it a heavy distress before we're all done and it'll look great. That's, that's why we distress everything because it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> don't want out our secret. All right, so that is actually sturdier than I thought it was going to be, which is good. And now we've got a bench. And it needs, I'm going to start scrubbing it and then we'll, uh, we'll get to painting in here. So these are just all purpose like sanitary disinfecting wipes. We like to use them on the first run. If it's real bad, we'll spray it down with uh, like a disinfecting spray, almost like a bathroom cleaner. And get that all the gunk off. These might need a bathroom cleaner. <laughs> all right, you guys, legit. This is not any paper cutter. I bought it like... I don't know, a few years ago for 10 bucks. It's like a vintage. And Zev can sharpen this blade, which I like, and he keeps it really sharp, and I use it for paper crafting. I'm actually glad now that I keep it at the shop because I was always worried one of the kids was going to hurt themselves. You get nervous yourself using it. <laughs> it's, funny. it's funny to watch. When she brings it down, oh, she I almost jumps every ribbon. time. That's what I was looking for. I don't think I have any ribbon. I think it's all at the... You have that ribbon at the front of the shop? It's oh, that no, big, no, that's big ribbon. Thick. Oh, you're talking, we have some twine, some hemp twine, I think. Okay, I'll go look for the twine, but I thought that I had some red ribbon, but I might have left that at the house. All right, so I'll give you a close flyby here while I'm scrubbing. So you can see sitting, sitting down, like you guys are almost level with that. You can't hardly see that board. You'd probably have to be across the room, but like right here, this is my eye level. You can't, you can't see that board in the back. And these boards up here, I mean, I might sand the corners and make them not so sharp, but they're not super visible either. And once you paint them, they'll really not be noticeable because they'll just match with everything else. This is what I was talking about. It's giving me an eye twitch. This chair here was not <laughs> super straight. I might pull that back apart and try to close that gap a little bit, but it's sitting level, so I might not mess with it at all and just paint it. Up. Now, where did my fall along the And this is going to need probably a little bit of wood putty. That crack is bigger in the front than I thought. But once it's dry, I'll just, I'll just put some wood filler or something in there, and then we'll paint that up. I am struggling today. Yeah. You, I, I wanted to use you were off playing in the shop when I told you you should have been gathering I supplies. Know, I came up with this idea, and I couldn't, I couldn't control my excitement. With the cardboard? With the cardboard, yeah. But I want, I want the fall a lot. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look in the other room, see if I can find that stencil that I'm looking for. Okay. And if I can't. There's a bunch on the shelves there, did you look? What shelves? To your left? These shelves. Down? Yeah, I looked. Okay. Oh. I got, I hate opening up new stuff. 
stencils because... Oh, don't open a new one. Okay. I'm sure it's around somewhere. <laughs> no, I'll just use, I'll use this tree. It's okay. I like the tree on the fall la 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 one. But. Here, you can come over here and stencil right here on top of my, my chairs because they're going to get painted anyway. Okay. That way they can see what you're doing real nice and All close. All right, so this is the one that I'm just going to leave as is. I think it's really cute. And I'll bring out my other four. Look at that, guys. <laughs> I could be scrubbing for a minute. You totally could make these just as cute little tags for like not Christmas and leave them oops, um, as is. Decoupaging would even be good too. I'm gonna put these all out here. Put that all of them. Okay, Zeb, could you pass me? I need my yeah. mat and I need the red paint. Okay, red paint. I'm pretty sure this is card. You're gonna have to work like this, sweetie. I'm gonna have to work like what? Sideways. <laughs> I'll just put the camera sideways, and you guys can see what I'm doing. Do you need the brayer too? Um, no. Oh, you're stenciling. I will need the brayer eventually. All right. I'm struggling here. A little bit of paint. I'm doing car. Yep, that's carnival red. I wasn't sure until I squirted it out, and then I knew for sure. Load my brush a little. You guys, if you got cats that are dogs, there's gonna think somebody's out the door. Okay, let's get this. Oh, so, you're gonna do the tree over the top? That'll be cool. Yeah, do you think that's centered? I can't tell. Yeah, uh, I think so. I don't know if it matters on your cardboard card. It totally it always matters. Okay. I think so. Okay, I'm going in. Ready or not, I'm using the number 20 stencil brush. I like using these bigger brushes when I'm doing projects that are just a single color because they really cover a lot of surface area. This is a little bit difficult with you shaking. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. I'll hold it down. I'll steady. blame any bleed through on my stencil on you. Okay, I'll take it. It's your birthday though, I gotta be nice. Okay. I'm gonna put a little bit more paint on there. Yeah, Birth birthdays for me are almost like other days. I'm going to be working all day. I'll take Sunday off. Yeah, we'll solve it. My birthday was on Sunday this year. That was convenient. All right. Ta-da! I like that. It's a little Christmassy, a little farmhousey. Okay. So we'll do, we've got the, this bohemian one here. I don't know which part of, I think I'm just going to do some reindeer across it. But I think that green would be good, so I'll be back. Some green? Yeah. Um, <sighs> where's Salty Kit? There we go. So I'm, I'm getting there pretty quickly, actually. The, it just seems like it's like dirt. Probably a family, a bunch of little kids had this and lots of spills. Oh, I need you to open this. Anytime it's a situation where it may have been in a kitchen, you're gonna always have that going on. All right, so this is the To All A Good Night stencil. It's one of our Christmas stencils. Now you can pick up these stencils at jamierayvintage.com or you can pick them up, um, hold on, I don't want that part. You can pick them up at any retailer that carries my stencils, which if you go to jrvwholesale.com, there's a retailer map there. So I'm gonna use Salty Kiss on this one. stars because there happen to be stars on the bottom of this so we're gonna move that to the image. Oops. Probably taping it down might be a good idea. <laughs> you know me. Okay. Can you distress cardboard? <laughs> Can you distress cardboard? I think maybe. Alright so we've got the reindeer. I don't know if I like it in the green. What I think the think? green, it doesn't quite, sh it's, uh, it's real busy with the white behind yeah, it. Yeah, I think the red is better. All right, well, this one might get repainted. Let's try that again. So maybe in what red. it would be good if you did like this in white and then the, oh, yeah. the stencil or the so, stamp in prairie gray. Is that what you were using? Is prairie gray? Yeah. I just repaint over it. But what if I did that in the red? Green. Would that stand out better in red? 
I don't know, can you match it up and do red? Oh, you're right. just gonna wipe it off. <laughs> I'm just gonna wipe at it and then I'm gonna repaint this one. I'm not gonna waste the cardboard. Yeah, why should you do that? All right, that's why you never worry. Okay, real quickly. Well, when you're using expensive crafting supplies like cardboard. You know? Hey, yeah, right? When you're using cardboard. Well, say it's just, it's a little bit of a pain to cut out, so I don't wanna have to do it a million times. So we're just gonna put on. All right, we'll move on to the next one in a second, guys. All right. That white ink wasn't quite dry, so this is going to get a little whitewashed effect. All right, cardboard. It never happened. Done. Okay. Now, I had another idea. I was going to do the numbers and do 25, you know, for the 25th of December. The nice thing about customizing stuff like this with stamps and things is that if you don't celebrate Christmas, if you're celebrating Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or it's Easter time or whatever holiday you're celebrating, you can take these crafts and do a bunch of different things. All right, so I've got my 25. Where's my brayer? Okay, so I get asked, can you use ink paint on the stamps? You can. The ink's going to give you a little bit better coverage but sometimes the paint is just handy. And if you can't afford to buy all the color of inks and the pads and you've already got paint, just buy a brayer and you can totally use your paint. All right, so I got my 25 done. And the paint does dry fast, so you have to be a little bit quick. Zeb, could you do this for me? You're so much better at it. Would you, you just want the 25 right there? Yeah. Oh, you got me uh, freestyling. Oh, it's down. <laughs> Hopefully it's good. Okay, two. Oh, that's cute. Now maybe re-roll that because the ink, the paint does dry really fast, much faster than the ink. That's a little bit over this way, so make sure there's the same amount of space there. Oh, well, I got some green and my five is crooked. <laughs> we might be repainting that one. No you way. guys get the idea. I just shifted. Well, you probably should have put it on a mount and just both at yeah, the same time. Yeah, I think time. you're correct in that one. I, I did all right. Yeah, there we go. 25. I That's cute. I don't know where cute. I picked up green paint at. Oh, all right. right here. I like the Christmas tree so far. I wish I could find my mini ones. Okay, you're going to have to scoot your situation over oh. here because I'm going to start painting. Oh, okay. Well, you told me to come over here. No, it's fine. What if I did a green tree? What do you think? Should I, or should I just stick with the red? I don't know. Green tree could be good because it's a big solid block. It's not going to mesh with the, it's not going to mix in with the background. All right. We'll do this skinny tree right here. But I am missing my paintbrush that I had. We're going with a big one. I think this is the original number 12 that we got. We've had that 12 for a hot minute. This is an old paint pixie brush and it has painted hundreds of projects. I've never thrown one out, so you never know. Okay, so this is a first in, first out bottle. We use them, they're originally designed for food. We only use them for paint. They're, they're intended for condiments like ketchup or ranch dressing or whatever. Are they? Yeah. I've always just used them for paint. Yeah, that was their original purpose. Who knew? Because uh, you get the first in oh, as the you're first right. out. That's cute. Okay. So with the green just a little bit thicker there on that one. Okay. I wonder if I can put the big fat Christmas tree over the 25. Like try to cover up our mistake. I don't think so, but we're going to try it. Where's my red stencil brush? Mm, it's over here. Yeah. All right, let's see, guys. Can we cover up this mistake with a big fat Christmas tree? Oh, maybe this one's fatter. Nope, this one's better. Okay. Thank you. I had it better, and then. When you're painting one solid color, it's my favorite way to do it is just glob a bunch on there and then smooth it out before it dries with your brush. You're so good at that. I'm pretty sure that this is a little black dress. Yeah, that's really dark, so it's probably a little black dress. 
I just wasn't sure because I hadn't labeled them, which is probably a smart idea to label them. Because I'm basically getting one coat coverage. It'll be a little bit of touch up here and there, but not much. All right. Ta-da! It mostly covered it. We'll distress the cardboard, put a little white wax on there. That's cute. Okay, so this is what we got so far with our little cardboard ornaments here. I'm going to see if this one's dry yet. You want to check comments while you're seeing? All right, I'll go back to comments. Okay, I've got this one still drying, so we'll let this dry and I'll go back to comments. Devil, you go do anything about the gap in the backs of the chairs? Nope. I'm not going to sweat that. Some chairs, they, they fit flush, and some don't. Um, I mean, it's all one piece, so I'm not going to sweat that gap. You heard it here first. He's not sweating the gap. All right, let's see if I can make a little worm that will fit on there while you're doing that. Okay, do we have any questions? Let's see. Any wedding stencils? Um, no, but that would be smart, maybe for a new year idea. But we do a lot of joy because it fits in small spaces. <laughs> it's going to probably be a joy. Here, I'll bring the camera back over so they can see what we're both doing. Uh, I'm just seeing if they'll fit. I need a clear plastic sheet. So guys, this is the one I messed up on. I'm gonna re-stamp it and then I'm gonna do Joy on it. So if you don't, I'm just squirting this directly onto the brush to get these vertical surfaces, but you could also just put it on like a paper plate or a painting palette or something like that. Uh, we like these um, mats too that we use, that we get them at Ikea because they're washable. All right, I'm just using the mat that comes with the letter, what are these called, letter press? But no, um, pipe, setting. pipe setting. Pipe setting stamps. They come with uppercase, lowercase, and numbers, and they're a really universal set that we use a lot for the holidays. So, all right. Maybe I'll add some wreath builder on here, I don't know. Decisions, decisions. I could use the heat gun, but I'm worried it'll catch on fire. No one touches my good scissors or paint key, Bobby says. That's funny. Is it East Lake? No, these chairs are not that old. They're just Mexican pine imported from Mexico that we bought used. Um, question, are y'all still selling Christmas stuff? Yes, we sell Christmas stuff almost every day. And we have our Black Friday and Small Business Saturday coming up in the shop. And those are big days that people still buy and decorate for Christmas. So I want to make sure that there's plenty of Christmas in here for people to choose from. Anything that doesn't sell this year, we'll just put it in the closet and be that much more ready for next year. Oh, Past Forward Shop says, I'm so excited to get my JRB stenciled in my shop. I placed my order yesterday for all you fellow Dayton, Ohio peeps. So she must be in Dayton, Ohio. That's Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Um, the Jamie Ray Vintage stencils are really fun and we use them a ton. We use the IOD and the Jamie Ray Vintage stencils all the time to like zhuzh stuff up. Okay, but it's still dry. Where did you say that heat gun was? Um, over there somewhere. Behind you, I don't know. It must be over, no, it's not attached to the extension cord. I may have put it away, let me go check real quick. Okay. Nope. Are you going to stencil stamp the bench today? The bench is just getting painted black and it's going to be distressed and there won't be any stenciling or stamping on this bench. I don't... At least it's not in the plans. I don't know. It's okay. Oh, I found it. Another thing that would be great use for these little cardboards, if you have little bits and pieces of leftover transfers, these are a good opportunity to use things that wouldn't really fit on anything larger. So I'll probably cut out a bunch more of these later and use the transfers on it because we have tons of leftover transfers from our video yesterday, little bits and pieces. Those ones are almost dry. Yeah, aren't they cute? And we got a little great paint on that. I have it on low. Less likely to cause a house fire.
how did I find the manufacturer? Uh, the manufacturer, I found her because I carried some other stencils. And um, she was like, hey, if you ever want to create your own line of stencils, I'd do that for you. So it just kind of happened. So if you want somebody to make something for you, find somebody that already makes it and sells it and say, hey, I'm interested in doing this. What would you do? It does help. Having a YouTube platform helps because they know that you'll have a way in which to sell them so it's worth their investment. But there's more than one way to get things done. All right, I'm going to use white ink on this joy. Okay, this is what he's talking about using the mat. <laughs> Helps keep things uh, the correct direction and they fit better. These, are, these come with every stencil set. You get these come on the top of them and I just use it to mount everything on. Ta-da! Joy, that one's cute. Okay, what am I gonna do with the joy? Joy to the world. Has anybody done Christmas shopping? Because you know how many things I bought for Christmas? Zero items. I need to have the kids make their list. And then I need to hit up my Amazon. I don't worry about doing my Christmas shopping until about two days before Christmas. It's because you don't do a lot of Christmas shopping. Shop for you. This is true. But we don't really buy much for each other. Christmas for us is more about the kids. All right. I'm going to use part of the Bohemian stamp on here. I may have to uh, get a smaller brush and get in these cracks, or I might take it outside. It's raining, but I think if I keep it under the back porch, it'll stay dry enough and like let it dry all day or all right. whatever. Look how cute that is. I think that turned out darling. This is a great way to just use old cardboard. I know if you guys shop online, you get all those boxes, and it's great to recycle them, but even better if you can use them for something that you might otherwise purchase mass produced. And if you've got stamps and stencils and paint, really the options are endless. So I've got this cute little um, thrifted twine here. Do we have the scissors here? Are there um, any scissors? They were over here, but we still have a mess from our uh, yesterday's video. <gasps> okay, I I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the office and grab the scissors. I found them. Oh, you did? Wait, because Ivy doesn't like it when I take her scissors. <laughs> She's nice about it, but I'm sure it gets annoying. Like you go to shift and there's no scissors. All right, I'm gonna just use this twine a few times over because it's kind of thin and not very impressive. Okay, so I've got like four things of twine here and I'm just going to fold it in half and do what I call a library pull, like a library, you know, bookmark. Just fold it in half and then that and that's what these will look like and then we'll use this to tie them on our little um, mannequin so I'm gonna go ahead and paint the backs of these while you're doing that okay and then once they're all painted I'll put the I'm just trying to get this front painted up so they can see kind of get an idea before we got to go yeah they get an idea of what it will look like well once you see it all painted you kind of get the idea it looks less like three chairs and more like cohesive like a bench This would be a fun activity to do with your kids too. Some people decorate sugar cookies. I'm not one for making icing, but <laughs> my kids love to paint. We actually had the Pinewood Derby last night at our church and they let all the kids, not just the Cub Scouts do the Pinewood Derby and all my kids painted their own cars. In fact, I didn't even help them get out. They know where the paint is in the cabinet and they all just got out the paint and got their uh, cars done. Even Jack, he's, he's painted so much, he's really not a mess. He had a, I carved him out a dragon car. He wanted dragon a dragon. And Eliza wanted a unicorn. And Redrick's was like a streamlined car because he was uh, intent on winning. He didn't win, but his car was fast. He took first in a couple heats. Yeah. It was cute. Do we have a fan? We don't have a fan in the shop. Sometimes we use a heat gun. I have gun. a big fan down in the basement, but it's loud. It's loud. It's video. not something you guys want to listen to. I mean, to. the heat gun is loud too, but it's fast. Yeah. Normally what happens when we're not live is we paint some stuff and then we go work on other things and come back. And the farmhouse is actually about three minutes from here. So many times we 
paint stuff, go work at the farmhouse, then I come back in a few hours and do a second coat. Don't move that bench. I got ornaments drying on it. On my bench? Oh. <laughs> just, well, you can move it. I just need fair warning. Kind of like when, oh gosh, okay. I like to eat in bed and I'll get like all ready with my snacks and stuff eating in bed and then Zeb doesn't give me warning and he'll like fluff the blankets around and then the food goes flying. So I'm always like, you have to give me warning before you move the blankets. My popcorn's getting everywhere. Anybody else have that struggle? It's just me. Probably most people don't eat in bed. Sorry, Jean's here getting the shop ready. Oh, I got paint on me. I'm gonna have to wash this. This is one of my favorite sweaters. Last week, Lauren was wearing a shirt. She worked for us and she's wearing a shirt with these flouncy sleeves on it. I'm like, we're gonna have to give you other projects because you can't be painting furniture. <laughs> getting your sleeves in the paint. Do you ship to South Africa? Um, I don't know. If you email customer care at jamierayvintage.com, Caitlin can let you know. We used to, but the shipping company we used has gone under. They basically well, we became non-responsive, so we've had to stop for, for now, I think. Yeah, it cost us the last time we used them, but we actually do ship internationally, and there are quite a few countries we ship to. So email customer care at jamierayvintage.com, and Caitlin will let you know because she's awesome like that. Okay. Let's see. Tammy says she's bad about eating in bed, too. Good thing you guys are too young. Um, I never eat in bed. I can't stand the crumbs. So I just washed my sheets before my mom came. I, I don't eat in bed. You do sometimes. You eat popcorn in bed all the time. And Zeb, like, rolled over last night, and he's like, didn't you just wash the sheets? Why are there crumbs? And I'm like, I don't know. I might have uh, had a cookie. Or two, I really like those Stroop waffles from Holland. I bought them at Costco, they're really good. Uh, how do you guys have so much energy? Do we ever sleep? We sleep every night and we sleep pretty darn good. I had a nightmare last night that my oldest kid was drag racing and so that did wake me up for about an hour but then I went right back to sleep. So I was like, what are you doing? He didn't, he didn't even do any, he didn't even do anything wrong and she, he got a good lecture this morning about not drag racing or trying to evade the police because of his drag racing. Hey, sometimes your dreams seem to be real, really real, and I feel like sometimes they're just like a little, hey, watch out for this. Or maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Do I have a new favorite IOD transfer? Um, mine would be the Wallflower, but I also do love the Wanderer, those two. Florals, I know you're not surprised. When you put IOD molds in the freezer, do you defrost before applying to furniture? Yeah, you're going to want your molds to come back to room temperature. So what she's talking about, um, well, I guess she, I didn't read it. Yes, Betty Smith. Um, when you make molds with the IOD molds that we sell, you can use the paper clay and make a bunch in advance and freeze them on a sheet tray. But before you use them, you're going to want to let them cool down to room temperature so they're not brittle. And then you can apply them to your pieces. They don't have to be, you know, completely room temperature, but you don't want them frozen hard. Because you think like, uh, when things get frozen, they get really brittle, so they drop and crack and all those kinds of things, so it'll make it harder to work with. Ivy says those two new transfers are her favorite, too. She probably ships, she's going to be shipping transfers like crazy because we've been selling a ton. Um, let's see. Do you have, uh, d -d 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 Eric, the best tip Jamie has given about cleaning them is use your paintbrush to scrub the stencils under warm water. Yes. Oh, yep. So you take your stencil brush that you use to stencil, Put a little Dawn on it and use that to scrub off your stencils. And it's stiff enough to clean them, but soft enough that it's not going to bend them. Um, if you do ever get like a stencil where a little teeny part has bent, put a, a cloth over it and use a warm iron quickly. And they're thick enough that they can be ironed flat. Just don't melt them. I'm going to have to open another thing of a uh, little black dress, I think. We're running low. Kimberly says, I take craft projects when I babysit my grandsons. They love it. What a fun grandma. All right, I'm going to heat gun these so that way I can put a little clear wax over them and uh, get them up so you guys can see how they'll be displayed in the shop because I think the display is just as much fun as the actual items themselves. So where did my heat gun go? Here it is. And if you were just decorating these on your tree you weren't going to do them for resale, I would not even worry about sealing them unless you're going to like hose down your tree. The paint is not going to come off of these. And by the time you <laughs> put them... <laughs> Hose down your Christmas Well, tree. so some people use real trees and they mist them with water. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. 
I guess I should say mist. Mike, hose down your tree. I'm thinking like a lit fake Christmas tree and someone taking it outside to like clean it <laughs> off at the end oh, of the year. Oh, it gets dusty. Why would you freeze your paper clay? Because some people want to make a bunch of molds in advance if they're doing a project that requires a lot of molds. And so you can freeze them in advance. Or if you're doing like a class, you know, if you sell the products and you want to have some made in advance, that also helps. Because making molds takes a minute. Uh, once the paper clay mold has dried, you can paint them and wet distress. If you use DIY paint, just paint them, seal it, let it dry completely, then put your top coat on, and then when you wet distress, it'll only wet distress down to that base layer. Pro tip there. Oh, I don't want to heat gun my phone. Yeah, Can the fine. molds just be left to dry at room temperature? Absolutely. We, I, I've never frozen a mold in my life. I don't have the patience for projects with lots of molds, so I've never had to do that. But Debbie, if you watch Debbie Beard, she does projects that have like a ton of molds on them. Or Mara LaFay from Vintage Retail Therapy. Both of them, in fact, it was Mara is the one who told me about freezing them first. It was not, definitely not my idea. She's like the IOD queen. She does lots of IOD projects. She also just signed on to carry our stencils, I think. Yes, Mara is a JRV stencil retailer. If you're anywhere near Fallbrook, uh, California, definitely check out Mara's store. She sells the DIY paint IOD and the JRV stencils. All right, so I don't think I'm going to have time to get this all painted in the live video because we're about ready to wrap it up here. But... There is the bench, the front painted, so you guys can kind of see what it's going to look like. And paint it up, it gives it a much more cohesive look. If it bothers you on the gap here, you could always run a little piece of wood. I, my brother Ty did this on a bench once. He like contoured a piece to go in there. And then, because he's, he's much more of a perfectionist than me. Me, we'll leave this just like this. It's sturdy. Once the glue dries on that cracked top, it'll be good as new. And then we'll distress it and kind of make it all a cohesive look. And you won't even hardly notice these. I'll probably fill these holes with putty before we're done. And then we'll paint that. And I might sand this edge down because it's, it's a little sharp and jagged. But other than that, this is pretty much done and just needs a little more paint and some distressing. We could wax it. We'll probably spray it because it's got a lot of little nooks and crannies and rungs and things. So I think we can get it down the stairs. Uh, I just dropped my string. But that is not super hard to throw a couple chairs together. It's even easier if they're all square chairs with the bench because you can see the bench top is just real nice and and uh, straight across they're almost like a regular bench all right okay. can you grab me would you do me a favor i want to get these show displayed on there would oh, you oh that cut? one curled a little is that from the it's, heat gun? yeah it's okay it's fine what i can do later once they're come dry dry is i can put something heavy on them and i'll straighten them right out uh, or put them inside of a book would you so if you're a channel member that dresser we painted yesterday on the sides, the paint came all the way off when we sanded it. It just was flaking off. The next channel membership video might be an edited video where we show you guys how we fix our mistake on that one. It's our fault. Like, we knew how shiny it was, and we really should have taken time to do it differently. But you never know. Okay, I can't get this through. All three. Okay, I need you to cut me okay, I'll come three more of this length, will you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you should put transfers on the bust that's on the floor. I want to, but I'm actually going to be using the tramp, that, that bust for a product because I have a bunch of merchandise and clothing that I sell here at the shop and I need another. So what are you needing now? I could put it and then do a tank top on it. Oh, hold on. I need three more lengths that long. So roll it all out. There you go. Because I'm doing it. Because this is like thin little like embroidery thread, so I got to do it enough so it gives it some substance. All right, one down. Where's the end though? Oh, I found it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go get the mannequin while you do that. Okay. Okay. And then get around here. Jamie's got me using my fine motor skills all of a sudden. I don't. I wasn't ready. What are you doing? Just like take the whole thread. 
string and then pull it out that way. You don't have to. Don't worry, I got this. Okay, you've got this. You've got this, boot. All right, so this, I'll show you guys. I feel like this completes the idea here. All right, this is the mannequin that's got all these little hooks on it. I bought it at the thrift store for $15. And I got the idea. I'll have Zeb put the link because last time we talked about this, nobody could find her. Um, the White Swan on Facebook and Instagram. She does this with some It's different... the White Swan Vintage Market. Or the White Swan Market. Or Market, something like that. If you guys look that up, it'll bring it right up. She does this with a different style tag, but she has, and hers is like an actual vintage mannequin with a skirt on it. But anyways, this is how I'm gonna display these for sale, aren't they cute? And then I'll put like a little price tag up here. All right, do we got one more cut so I can do another one? I have four, four over here. How okay. many did you need? I needed four total. So, but I need to cut the string, so I need the... All right. Make sure they can see what you're doing. I'm just bending it over. Oh, I don't think it's quite as long as those other ones. It's okay. That was actually your short one. Oh, okay. It's fine. We got if you it. had pre-cut, don't you put that on me. I'll put that on you. <laughs> all right. So all you do is you just take and put this through here. Oops, did I miss a piece? Or you could use ribbon, which would be probably cuter. But this is what we got. My fine motor skills are not as good as his. Yeah, I've got all these pre, I don't know how you're doing the. Oh, uh, just the little library tags. Like you would do like a bookmark. I don't know what that means. You, you don't know what that means? <laughs> no. Haven't you ever made a bookmark? Nope. Okay, hold on. Well, I mean, I probably did in school, but I don't remember putting All right, I'll on. show you. So you've got this, you're gonna cut this so these are all loose. Oh. For like individual strands. I see. Okay. And then you take, once they're all cut individually, Zeb, you're gonna take and make a loop like this. And then you poke. I've already got a loop. Okay. You're gonna poke these. It's actually probably easier, instead of using the raw edges, if you take the loop, and you poke it through here. Oh. And then you just take the raw, cut edges and you pull it through the loop like that and you just make like a bookmark tag. I don't know if I did it right, but you know, there you go. That looks good. <laughs> All right, I, I feel guys. like there's not a wrong way to do that. There, well, I mean, if it doesn't stay. All right, guys, uh, hit up JanuaryVintage.com for the paint and products you use today. Comment below with any questions that you guys have. Um, and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Bye, guys. All right. Now you guys can see kind of go, where we're go going build here. all the benches. I know. We're going to just here fill this all up with tags. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, can I hit the button? There we go. And